balls were good. <laughs> McNuggets, did you guys kill the donuts? No, they're, they're, we, we had like two bad. There's oh, the whole box right there. Somebody yeah. came in here and said the donuts are gone. No, no, no. There, there's I'm the like, whole box. What? No, we're not that, we're not that savage. <laughs> yeah, I know. I did 45 on the Peloton last night, and I do that a couple times a week so I can have a yeah, cheat yeah, snack no, once, no once in a while. So, yeah, that's what that was all about. It was great. Yeah, no, Matt was great. Thanks uh, again for uh, for coming in. I um, Matt really, he lives this charmed life. I asked him a couple of weeks ago a serious question. I said, I'm not joking now. Is there anything in the world that you want that you don't have? And he thought about it for a second. He said, I'd like to have a football team. And I mm -hmm. said, okay, all right. All right. I don't know if the Haslam's are selling anytime soon. Don't think so. But if they ever hit the market, I think they'll have a buyer, a local buyer that'll be ready to go That'd in a heartbeat. Great. You That'd know what's so great. crazy is, 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 is he, he lives a charm life, but everybody can get that. If you just, if you work hard and you, you got a vision and you stick to it, so you're made. competitive, you can get there. That's anybody. Yeah. Yeah, he's self-made, 100%. Uh, and he has this competitive spirit in everything he does. Yeah. It doesn't matter what he's doing. I don't care what it is. If he's doing anything he wants to be not great he wants to be the best, the best at it and he's he's really i know some folks in the nascar world and they are looking at matt as this outsider who's coming in with this huge checkbook because when i tell you guys that it's it's expensive you can't even imagine the, just the initial writing the check cost to own a team mm -hmm. and they're looking at him with these deep pockets and um and the things that he's doing and he's definitely shaking up that world and hopefully he's going to help the uh, the Guardians stay competitive for years. All right, Travis Hafner is uh, on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show now. Travis, it's been a minute. We had you on back in hey, May, I believe. It's great up, to man? see you again. How you doing? I am fantastic. Thanks for having me on. I love to hear it. Um, I, am I right? Are you down in Florida? Am I missing? Yeah, we're in that? we're in Tampa. Okay, oh. I was I was going to ask. I, I thought it was Tampa, and I didn't think that you were. Um, in the Fort Myers area. I just wanted to make sure that everything was, was okay after the storm came through there. I know Tampa was supposed to take the direct hit and ended up going a little bit south to, uh, to Fort Myers, but everything good. What do you make of the Guardians? Like, how in the world has this team won 92 games? Yeah, it's, it's really been incredible. Um, it's an exciting team, you know, the youngest team in the big leagues, and uh, it's a high contact team. They put the ball in play, they play with energy. Uh, it's an outstanding pitching staff, and uh, they've, they've been fun to watch. Now, Travis, tell us how hard it is for a team that, that is that young to, to recognize that they have an ability to do something special um, and, and recognize that and go get it, uh, as opposed to some other teams that may be more high-priced veterans, guys that are big names. How hard is it for a group of young guys to do that? It's hard. I mean, with, with young guys, you get kids that play with – with energy, but um, at the same time, it, it does take some time and uh, experience is very valuable. Just, you know, kind of learning the pitchers in the league, understanding how they're going to pitch you individually. And, you know, you're, you're trying to establish yourself as an everyday big league player. Um, and usually once you get more experience, once you've established yourself, then, you know, winning becomes the, the main priority. Hey, Travis, you've been around obviously in this league for a long time and knowing, knowing what you know as a pro, you're going into a playoff game here uh, in Cleveland tomorrow with uh, a bunch of young guys. So if you're the veteran in the group, when you walk into that locker room that day, what's the look that you don't want to see on those young players when you walk through the door? Well, I mean, I think everybody's going to be nervous. I mean, you don't, you don't want to see guys uh, too nervous, but a lot of it is just, you know, kind of focusing on the things that have got you there all year. So. Um, you know, as a hitter, like I don't want guys chasing pitches out of the strike zone. So a big part of my plan would just be, hey, get good pitches to hit. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to be the hero. Just, you know, try to focus on line drives up the middle and just kind of do what we've been doing all year. Travis, is this style of play sustainable in a postseason series? This team looks like the 1980 Cardinals to me with Vince Coleman and Willie McGee and Tommy Herr and put the ball in play and make chaos on the bases. Obviously, there's not 100 steals guys here, but just active on the base pass, first to third, aggressive base running. Does this translate better, worse, or the same as get two guys on and wait for a three-run homer? It's a good call. I, I think I saw something uh, the other day where a lot of times uh, whoever wins in the postseason uh, hits more homers or you know a lot of the runs come via the home run. 
And the Guardians aren't built for that, but at the same time, they put the ball in play, they put pressure on opposing defenses, they run the base as well. Um, so, you know, they have a chance to go out and score runs. Well, we saw, too, when Aaron Judge was sitting at 60. Mm -hmm. it, it, I know he finally got over 61 and then 62, but his home run pace dropped dramatically mm -hmm. the second he got to 60. And, Travis, that's something I want to talk to you about. That's fascinating to me because, obviously, he's gripping more. He's thinking about it more. He's trying to hit home runs. And as we saw during that stretch, you can have a power outage. Home runs have slumps. Running doesn't have slumps. Hustle doesn't have slumps. So I know that the majority of the teams that win do so via the home run, but I think the way this team is built with the runs and the hustle, that doesn't take days off. And, and I, I like where we are. I like this team's chances in the postseason, particularly against the Rays, even against the Yankees I do. Now, the Astros might be a different story, but... I think this team is positioned to, to make a little run here. Yeah, it's it's a unique style of baseball, um, not something that you see a ton of in the big league. So it's it's going to be a tough matchup for any team that the Guardians face. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, and again, like they can wreak havoc on the bases and, and really challenge a defense. And, um, you know, there's they're going to run into some strikeout pitchers that, you know, might, they might – make him work harder and uh, throw some extra pitches and get some good pitches to hit eventually and, you know, find a gap or hit a ball out of the ballpark and score runs that way as well. So it's it's going to be a challenging matchup for any team they face. Uh, Travis, this is a, a, a little bit of a weird thing. Three game series. Um, are you worried about a young team possibly dropping the first game and then that pressure builds and ratchets it up for the second and third game in a very short series? Yeah, you definitely want to come out and win game one. Um, but at the same time, if it doesn't happen, there's there's a little comfort in knowing that all three games are at home. So, you know, it's it's not like if you lose game one, it's like, okay, game three's in Tampa. We've really made it uphill for us. Um, so, you know, obviously the first game is going to be huge and you want to come out and win that one. But there is some comfort knowing all three are at home. What do you think of this format? Uh, you know, it's it's exciting having more teams in the playoffs and, and more teams involved in uh, in the wild card chase. And, you know, I, I think one thing that was frustrating is you play 162 or 163 games and then it comes down to one game. And, you know, you're in the playoffs one game, you lose, you run into, you know, Jacob deGrom or Scherzer or something like that and you lose and it's like season's over. So this at least gives you a chance to, you know, face – three opposing pitchers or have three of your guys go and, you know, kind of eliminates just running into like the elite Cy Young type pitcher. Talking about pitching, um, it, it certainly a premium is always on pitching in October baseball. Speak to how this team is positioned with the front of the rotation guys, knowing that they've got a Cy Young caliber guy in Bieber who looks like Shane Bieber again, young Tristan McKenzie, who, Looks like Mr. Salty out there throwing a baseball, but just all he does is throw strikes and get guys to swing and miss. And then, you know, even if you have to, you got Quantrill as the third starter. How do you, how do you think the pitching matches up in, in a postseason series with, the, with what the Guardians have here in arms? Yeah, you, you feel really good about running Bieber and McKenzie out there the first two. Uh, the first two games of this series. And, you know, you back that up with a very strong bullpen of, you know, five or six very capable guys out there. So, you know, definitely like our chances the first couple games of the series. And then uh, Kel's been outstanding this year as well, and in particular, very good at home. So, uh, you know, I think our pitching is going to, you know, give us a chance to win each game. Hey, Travis, I, I, I'm, I'm flipping a little bit from baseball, but, you know, last time we had you on, you had the ghost the ghost image behind with the door open. And behind. <laughs> yeah. You got it locked this time. You keeping them out this time. <laughs> hey, I, I swear my dog just came in here like five minutes before it started and the door opened up. And I thought exactly of that moment. So I'm actually sitting under my feet. <laughs> it gave us a great laugh. We enjoyed it. Hey, uh, Travis, talk about the difference between regular season baseball and playoff baseball? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, 
people say like, you know, just got to think of it as another game. And there are some aspects of that that are definitely true, but there's, there's so much adrenaline. There's so much excitement in the ballpark. I mean, every pitch is, you know, people are just locked in every pitch and it's exhausting when the game is over because you've been so involved in every pitch. But, um, you know, I think the big thing is just kind of sticking with your approach of what got you there. Um, and not trying to do too much because I think that's going to be like the natural thing to want to try to do is like, I want to be the hero. I'm going to step up and hit a home run or I'm going to be over aggressive. So if they can stick with their game plan, do what they do very well, um, they can really use the crowd to their benefit. Hey, I, can I spill a little bit of tea on you? Uh, my day job is a reporter. So sometimes when I'm bored, I know this sounds so loserish. <laughs> I'll just like search real estate records and property and see who, what's doing what's what's moving and i found your house in avon lake under ron burgundy proper or ron burgundy enterprises with, <laughs> with burgundy misspelled so i found you even though you tried really hard to <laughs> Loser. no matter how hard Loser. no matter how hard you Loser. tried to find this it, guy no matter how hard you tried to bury it i still found it Here's so i want to know how i mean obviously you're a big anchorman fan but you misspelled burgundy was that intentional or was that it was intentional a, it was intentional, it was intentional. And i yeah. found you anyway <laughs> I, I didn't realize there'd be somebody as good as you out there so oh, that's only, off to only you. a loser <laughs> so well, let me ask you first of all why why would you misspell burgundy um i don't know that's a very good question uh i had you really wanted a couple to be years stealth. ago but i'm not sure what it is now <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always wanted to bring that up and ask yeah, you. You got that. a lot of time on your hands. I, see. I told you I'm a loser. <laughs> McNuggets has something for you. Go ahead, Mikey. I have a little Ron Burgundy story real quick, and then uh, I got a question for you, Travis. But when Anchorman 2 came out, Ron, Will Farrell as Ron Burgundy came to Emerson College. It was my senior year, did a press conference, and they renamed the journalism school the Ron Burgundy School of Journalism for one day. <laughs> That's beautiful. We got to ask him questions in a press conference setting. He answered as Ron Burgundy. It was awesome. He did not break character. But, Travis, I did have a real question yeah. for you. We keep playing the locker room video from when they clinched a couple of weeks ago. Is there any party that compares to a locker room party with unlimited champagne, cigars, and literally no rules? They are absolutely fantastic. And I try to think of ways that we can do like these baseball type parties in like everyday life, um, like what <laughs> you could celebrate and it like, you just can't come up with anything that compares to it. But uh, that moment there that they're showing is just, you know, that's why you play the game. It's so much hard work um, that goes into that moment and everybody coming together as a team. But uh, those actual parties Not are incredible. Team. Okay. Are there too many of those? Like divisional, like wild card, you're popping champagne. No other sport does this. Wild card round, let's pop champagne. ALCS, ALDS, ALCS. We're, like, shouldn't you wait until you, like, win the championship? To they pop did win champagne. a championship. They're the AL Central champs. But, like the Cavs never pop champagne from winning the Central Division or you know like anything like that. Are there too many in baseball, or do you just love it so much? Just every day, let's go for it. Well, I don't know that there can be enough, or, or I, don't, I don't think there can be too many champagne parties because they're that awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think making the playoffs is such a big deal because the season's so long. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying too. Like maybe you reserve it for you know the American League win an American League championship headed to the World Series. Um, but they are fun. And I think it's, you know, there's something special about celebrating each step along the way and, you know, kind of uh, just, you know, puts a puts a bow tie on each round that you're moving on. So um, they're fantastic. And, you know, the ones that I was in, was in was, were, were great. Goggles seem to be a, a new thing. I don't think people realize how much it burns your eyes. Oh, yeah. Did you have goggles or were you an eye burner? I was an eye burner. Um, <laughs> you know, back when I played, if you wore goggles, it was, uh, you know, you get made fun of a little bit, uh, called out your manhood a little bit. But now I guess. Sign of weakness. I guess everybody's using goggles. So that is the, the seems goggles to be the new way to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're being a buzzkill, Jay, to be perfectly well, honest. I, that's the <laughs> first time I've been told that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hell. The, 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 to Travis's point, these guys got together in the middle of February. Right. They see each other more than they see their families. Mm -hmm. They've had highs. They've had long losing streaks. They've had lows. They've had injuries. 
They've overcome obstacles. You're at the end of the 162 game sprint mm -hmm. marathon. Hell, let loose and celebrate. Well, if any team deserves it, it's this one. They weren't expected nobody, to be there. Nobody thought this was happening. You, so. you didn't have them winning 92 games, did you, Trav? <laughs> I did not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's been incredible that they've gotten to this point. Um, you know, I think a lot of people would look at the White Sox on paper as mm. the best team yeah. uh, in the AL Central and then the Twins kind of behind them. And, you know, Guardians would be right in that 2-3 spot. But, um, yeah, they're them winning the division has been truly incredible this season. What's their ceiling here? What, how, how far can they go? Um, you know, anything can happen in the postseason. Uh, you know, I, I would love to see them go play the Yankees because that's like two dramatic different styles of baseball, and it'd be very interesting to see what happens. And you know, then in the in the NL, they got uh, the Dodgers and the Braves, who are two really really good teams. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like definitely not looking looking too far forward but I think uh I think this is going to be a really good matchup with the Rays and hopefully we can move on and play the Yankees yeah one day at a time if we gave you 10 at bats right now not in playoff baseball but regular season baseball if we were to throw you in for 10 at bats what would you do what would your average be and would you homer um are you saying right now or do I yeah, get the practice? Right off the couch sure right off the couch you're called off up. the couch I'd probably hit zero <laughs> 10 punch outs. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt that very seriously. Travis, great to see you again. Ron Burgundy. Enjoy great the to playoffs. See you yeah, I, yeah, I look at you in a whole different light now that I know that. Yeah. That is a great fun fact. Jason, thanks for bringing that to the party. Uh, enjoy the game. I hope, I hope uh, the team that comes from the city you're living in now is back there in a couple of days with their tail between their legs and the Guardians are moving on to see the Yankees. That would be fantastic. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate you bet. it. Travis right. Hafner, a former Cleveland Indian great. I noticed in the graphic there we had N.D. Goat. Yeah. North and Dakota. Yeah, I don't want anybody to think that he yeah. went to Notre yeah. Dame and broke all the records yeah. there. He is, the, without question, the greatest baseball player ever produced by the state of North Dakota. Prong, my son's favorite player.